One of the rapidly evolving areas of the platform centers on ArcGIS Online. With a recent update last December and another update coming soon in March, we wanted to spend a few minutes with you and educate you about some of the enhancements that you have available today and some of the ones that are coming next month. So to learn more, please welcome Craig Cleveland. Thanks, John. To help us explore my 10 favorite enhancements from the December release of ArcGIS Online, I have a hosted feature service here in my map that shows the locations of near mid-air collisions of planes over the past five years. Whenever I see a map like this, the first thing I instinctively want to do is zoom into the area I live and find out more. To date, we do that through pop-ups. Here I can see the date and time this incident occurred, where it occurred, and that it was evaluated as critical. But what if I want to see all the details associated with this incident, or see multiple incidents at one time? Well, this leads me to my first December enhancement, the ability to show table. I can now see all the attributes associated with this layer, things like the make, model, and series of the aircraft involved, and even the altitude at which the incident occurred. I can sort fields, select records, and zoom over to them. Now let's say for the moment I'm only interested in further investigating those incidents evaluated as critical. How can I do that? I can do that by looking to enhancement number two, the ability to filter. Using the filter capability, I can limit my display to just critical incidents. I've now narrowed the features in my map from 392 to just 55. For those of you in the audience like me, you're looking at this data trying to discern a pattern, asking questions like, when are these occurring? Let's try to answer this by looking to enhancement number three, the ability to time enable a hosted feature service. On this tab are the item details for the layer in my map, and it's here that I can time enable it. I'll now re-add this layer to my map. And we're once again looking at all types of near mid-air collisions, but we're looking at them in six-month windows of time. Useful, right? Well, seeing the data over time was great, but I want to look at more data to try to help me find patterns. And not only do I want to look at more data, but I want it to perform optimally while I'm using it. To accomplish that, I can look to number four on my list, the ability to publish a hosted tile service from a hosted feature service. Here's a hosted feature service that I published for the past 25 years of near mid-air collisions. And it's from here that I can publish that tile service to help me look at large quantities of data and ensure that the service performs well and is responsive. When I publish the service, I give it a title, tags, and summary, and choose my desired scale range. Once complete, we can add this layer to my map as well. And now we're looking at a full 25 years worth of data here in my map. OK, let's switch gears for a moment and begin to look at some sharing and administrative related enhancements. One thing we often do with hosted feature services is enable editing. But what if I want to disable editing on a layer for a particular map? We can do that by investigating number five on my list, the ability to disable editing on a feature layer on a map by map basis. OK, perfect. I'm ready to save my map, and now I'm going to share it. And I'm going to go ahead and share this with the public, as well as a group that I collaborate with around aeronautical resources. This little reminder here walks me right into number six on my list, the ability to update layer sharing while sharing a map. Let me read this to you real quick. These layers in the web map may not be visible to others because they are not shared in the same way as the web map. Click Update Sharing to adjust the settings of the layers you own so they can be viewed in the web map. I'll go ahead and do that, because I certainly want everybody to see all my layers. OK, we'll browse over to my group now 
and take a look at some of those administrative related enhancements. The seventh December enhancement I'd like to highlight is the ability to directly add members to a group. As an organization administrator, I can search for someone and then check this box to add members of my organization immediately without requiring confirmation. And just that quickly, my colleague is a member of my group. I'm going to scroll through here and find that map that I just created. And as I do, something jumps out at me. There's some content in here that shouldn't be. And that brings me to number eight on my list, the ability for group administrators to remove group content. And to ensure that this doesn't happen again, we'll go right to number nine on my list, the ability to make groups view only. By toggling the contributors from all members to only the group administrator, I can ensure that moving forward, only I can add content to this group. And lastly, to help me discover timely content more quickly, we can utilize enhancement number 10, the ability to sort group content. I'll set this to sort descending by date, which will allow the newest content in my group to filter to the top. And here's the map I've just created. All right, let's take a brief moment and recap my 10 favorite enhancements from the December release, which I have listed here in this PDF. It's pretty powerful stuff, right? All right, who's ready to get started looking at that March release? All right, yeah, absolutely. Trick question, though. We already started. Did you notice where I launched that PDF from? I launched it from its item details page at RTS Online. At the March release, we now offer support for non-geospatial content. Let me do a quick search here for near mid-air collisions and show you what's returned. I can see an Excel spreadsheet, a Word document, and even a PDF. We'll also be offering support for a few new layer types, the first of which is GeoRSS. Here's a GeoRSS feed I have from the USGS showing earthquake locations with associated shake maps. We'll also be offering support for the OGC specification for WMTS. Here, I'm adding a layer of post-Hurricane Sandy imagery provided by NOAA. OK, one last sneak peek at the March release. And uh, in all honesty, this one here is, is probably uh, my favorite. Here I have a, a map of the locations of the Smithsonian Gardens and points of interest within them. I want to be able to share this map in a way that will provide a virtual tour of the gardens and all they have to offer. Today, I do that by downloading the map tour template and hosting it on my own servers. But as of the March release, the map tour template is now a hosted template. And this whole process gets much easier. I'll show you how easy it is. I can share my map, give it a title, save it, and launch it. And just that quickly, here's my map tour. I can see photos and their descriptions, and of course I can see their locations on the map. And not only can I view my map tour, as the owner of it, I can toggle to the builder mode and make adjustments. I can do things like edit titles and descriptions of my photos. I can reorganize photos. And of course, I can add new photos as well. Give them titles and descriptions and an associated location. And if there is location information within the photo itself, that's taken care of for me. Now lastly, I'd like to highlight the responsive design of the new template. It's built to provide for an elegant presentation regardless of the device I'm using. Here, I'm looking at the map tour that I've just built as if it were built only for use on my phone. So look for these and much more coming in just a few short weeks with the March release. Back to you, John. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for that review of the December update and a sneak peek of the few of the improvements coming in March. 
ArcGIS Online is such an important part of the platform that we really encourage all of you to leverage this capability, to explore the possibility, because what you've just seen with ArcGIS Online is included in every federal government ELA. So if you're not familiar with how to do this, please contact your GIS coordinator or give us a call and we'll try to get you the help so you can leverage and take advantage of some of these things.